Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560 The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Boy, it was uh, real acrimonious for the last few days, including yesterday morning. And then by end of day, it was all hunky-dory, the magic of Chicago politics. CTU Marxist in charge, Jesse Sharkey, on the deal. Ultimately, I'm very proud of the fact that the members of the Chicago Teachers Union took a stand around this. Um, and um, we're, we're going to keep doing what's right as we go forward in the city. Um, you know, it was not an agreement that had everything. It's not a perfect agreement, um, but it's something that we, we, we can hold our heads up about, um, partly because it was so difficult to get. And uh, Pedro Martinez, uh, the man with the nasty two-seam fastball, has uh, this to say, CPS mm-hmm. superintendent had this to say. I want to make sure that everybody knows that we are committed to the safety of our students. We're committed we to the are. safety of our staff. Yeah, we We're going to work together. We We're going to be great. There's some really great. good things in this agreement. Yeah. Oh, See, really? What, 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 are the good, the, what the heck did CTU get? Add 95 masks for the staff and students? whoop de doo they would have gotten that anyway if they had asked for it earlier. That's not the point. Pedro Martinez said there's some good things in this agreement. Well, what does okay. that say? What's that telling the public? That CTU had a point. Yeah, you're right. Because that's they were out, and we negotiate with them, and uh, there's some good things in this agreement. So thank you, CTU, for your work stoppage for the last five days because we, we've made the schools better because of it. That's what the uh, management side of the equation is saying about the labor side of the equation. It's a lie, but it doesn't matter because that's what they do. And so the beat goes on, and it's the same theater with the Chicago Public Schools, one of the worst public school systems in the country that it's been for 40 years at least. And I'll go back, uh, a, a quote I cite often, because it's so hurt, it, it hurts to hear, but it's so true. Bill Bennett, when he was Secretary of Education, under Reagan, right. and it was in Chicago in the late 80s. So we're talking 35 years ago. The Ku Klux Klan could not design a system more destructive to minority children than the Chicago public school system. And I ask again, what's changed for said minority children in the intervening 35 years? It's just now the kids that were in school in the late 80s have their kids in school in 2020 in 2022 for more on the topic pleased to be joined by paul vallis again former superintendent of the bridgeport public schools and the recovery school district of louisiana former ceo of both the school district of philadelphia and of course cps paul thanks for joining us again appreciate it well thanks for having me there's some good things uh in this deal pedro martinez says really thank you ctu thank you ctu I'm trying to I'm trying to figure it out <laughs> what the good things are. You know, I, again, kids have literally been without in school instruction now for 20 consecutive days. I mean, when you had the weekends and you had the days uh, that uh, that the teachers uh, that the teachers union uh, kept their members from work. So, uh, I, I mean, what did they get? They they got a metrics for closing individual classrooms and closing individual schools. You know, I, I saw something in the newspaper this morning. It said that, uh, uh, according to the CTU, uh, there were at least two schools who had met those metrics. Well, at last count, there's well over 600 schools. So let's see, CTU, you forced the district to shut down because the metrics were high and or they had exceeded this, this metrics level that you agreed to in two schools i don't know there's just something fundamentally wrong with the picture yeah but that's what they do paul that, that's what they've always done they do that we can't we can't provide a better education to any kid until we provide a better education to every kid it's the whole uh, nobody gets on a lifeboat unless everybody gets on the lifeboat uh, you know that's why the only salvation uh for 
uh, school children, public school children, uh, school children in Chicago overall is is really to create a 100% school choice district and allow for direct funding, which means parents get to pick their school, whether it's parochial, charter, uh, whether it's private school, it does not matter. There's no substitution for 100% school choice. And, and there's also no substitution for finally dismantling this, this uh, you know, almost totalitarian school system, centrally run school system, where like one, one size fits all, where they can simply shut down every school um, when the union uh, feels like expending their vacation or trying to intimidate the district and to show their muscle. Uh, and those are the, it's the only salvation. The, the city has lost, uh, um, they've seen such a middle income family exodus. We're down to 16% pre COVID. Uh, 16% of the city is considered middle income. And, and, and that's up from, yes. that's down from 50% when I graduated high school. And it's for two reasons. It's for crime and it's because of crime and it's because of th- this terrible school system. And obviously there's a link between crime and a failing school system. Well, why did they go on strike? Or the said work stoppage. I mean, what was the point to send Pedro Martinez a message or to mess with the mayor one more time before her reelection or what? You know, I think it's a combination of things. You know, I think clearly the union has become radicalized. Let's face it, you know, um, about 15 years ago when the school reform movement was on its ascendancy, more accountability, um, you know, uh, closing family schools and reopening them as, as charter schools. I mean, the whole nine yards, they decided to wrap themselves in, in, the, in the mantle and the flag of the progressive movement. And I think a lot of them have all got caught up in this, and, which is why they're a lot of times pursuing things in negotiations that, have, uh, that are totally unrelated to the responsibility, the basic responsibilities of, what, uh, of the schools, which is to provide quality education and to keep these buildings open. And particularly for poor kids, make up, uh, provide them with the instructional uh, time on tasks that they need, but also keep them in safe and secure environments. And I just think that they've become much more radicalized. The union that I negotiated two contracts with would have never, ever thought of striking, let alone striking for for no reason, which is, in effect, what the union uh, forced, uh, what the union did this time. Well, and here, here, I mean, it's not just happening in Chicago. I mean, we, you had Cincinnati public schools uh, vote six to one. Oh, they have a school board that votes. How novel. Uh, six <laughs> to one uh, to go remote last night. Uh, you have 5,000 schools around the country that are shut down. Um, so it's, it's, it's the dynamic of the unions that run the schools in, for the, the benefit and the convenience of the adults. But I want to go back to something you said um, previously, which is a, a you know, citywide school choice program, decentralization, and empower parents with spending power. So that sounds like a, a, a good idea. And it also sounds like a platform for a mayoral campaign in 2023. Well, look, it's been something I've been advocating for for a while. And as you know, in New Orleans, New Orleans is a 100% school choice uh, district. The only schools that are traditional public schools are the select enrollment magnet schools. The rest of the schools are all charters. They're independent charters, neighborhood charters, and, of course, they have vouchers. So at the end of the day, and the, the district dramatically improved. It led the state for seven consecutive years and improved academic performance. They went from only a quarter of the schools uh, meeting state standard to uh, four out of five schools meeting state standards. You know, more progress is, of course, needed. But... The mayor could do this unilaterally. She doesn't have to wait for a constitutional amendment or go to Springfield to get that done. The mayor, through, the, the mayor's going to control the school board. Uh, uh, the next mayor will control the school board for at least two years uh, before the elected school board uh, comes into effect. So the mayor could create a 100% school choice district right now if um, she really wanted to send a signal to the union and she really wanted to, to end this, this monopoly when you, if you want to talk about institutional racism in America, a publicly, uh, you know, uh, large urban districts are institutionally racist because they deny poor families, mostly black and Latino families, school choice. They they subject them to education redlining, where the quality of their school is determined by their zip code. And if and if it's not by intent, it's certainly by outcome. So at the end of the day, 
it, I mean, if you really if you really want to bring equity to the system, what you do is you create a hundred percent school choice district. Yeah, but Mayor Lightfoot's not going to do that because she needs the union. Oh especially now more than ever. And she let them walk all over her because she could have said there was a breach of contract and fired them or even docked them pay. But I don't think that anyone's going to lose a dime over not showing up for work for five days. I would have been fired if that happened. No, uh, no, uh, absolutely. I mean, look, I said last year when the union threatened to strike three times and forced them with catastrophic consequences to keep the schools open for an entire year, that what she should have done is she should have immediately basically abrogated the contract. They had violated the contract and and then moved to not only dock pay, but to move to begin to fire people who are not showing up to work. But she blinked three times. And I think one of the reasons that Janice Jackson left uh, uh, left uh, the school district was obviously not, I mean, she was willing to take on the union, but, she was prepared to dig in, and the mayor basically came three times. So what did we expect? You know, the union's been telegraphing during the Delta variant. They were telegraphing their intent to make demands and to, to allow the schools or force the schools to go remote again. They should have been far better prepared for this. Let's see if she she docks their pay for the days that they did not work. That's what that, That'll be interesting to see whether that agreement includes the fact that individuals who did not show up to work are going to receive non-paid days. So, so the problem is that we're out of time. The problem is <laughs> that the problem is, I mean, it really is you, you provided it. I mean, even in 2026, when we get an elected school board, so they can behave the same way the elected school board does in Jerry Springer land over there in Cincinnati. I mean, what's the difference? The union will control the school board like they control the, like they control right. most of the politicians in this state, the public sector unions. And you were just saying it, 16% of Chicago middle-income families, the hollowing out of the city, which has been reported on intermittently over the last couple of years, but no, nobody you know, dares talk about it. And even as we're persuading more minority families to de-link from the Chicago Teachers Union to recognize that, uh, that the simple, elegant argument that you make your choice. Here's the resources. you got the same resources as, uh, as Prof's family does in Wheaton. You go to whatever school you want. Simple as that. Here you go. Um, they're, they're, they're starting to wait, wait, hold on. They're starting to under, they're starting to move on that. You, the numbers are, are good and they're improving. And this is an idea whose time has come. Oh, did we lose Paul? All right. We did lose Paul. So, and, and try and get Paul back, but this is an idea whose time has come. There's no question about it. You know, we're in the Victor Hugo territory. This is not school choice. And is an idea whose time has come and there's nothing so powerful. It is going to win and it's going to win most everywhere, most everywhere. The question is, is Chicago already out of time because people have left and they're not coming back? It is Mercedes Marxists and beneficiaries of transfer payments and nothing in between. And identity politics will continue to rule the day. That's the question. Look, Dan, I just want to say one thing, and I, I temporarily got dropped. Uh, yeah. I didn't hear I didn't hear your. What you, I, I just said you, school choice. Yeah. School choice is going to win, and it's going to win almost everywhere. But in some places, yeah. it's it's in some places it may be too late, at least for another generation or two. Dan, it absolutely has to win, and and, and let me point out for 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 uh, Chicagoans out there, the Chicago public schools are spending the equivalent of twenty thousand dollars per kid. They they consume almost sixty percent of the property taxes. They consume 25 percent of all the K to eight funding, K to 12 funding that the state allocates to schools and 40 percent of all the federal money. And they've received close to two point eight billion dollars in COVID relief. For heaven's sakes, this is what we get. This is what we get. So there's no there's no pathway. And and, and, and I want to make one final comment. But the largest exodus of children from the system, the last the largest exodus of people from the city has been black families. Yes. 257,000 yep. black families have left the city of Chicago, overwhelmingly middle-income families with children. What does that tell you? People are voting with their feet. There's no alternative but school choice and to break up this huge monopolistic system and, and, and to free the hostages. So the people who aren't voting with their feet, are they going to have a chance to vote for Paul Vallis for mayor next year? Oh, that's not why I'm doing what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not saying it is, but 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 I am asking if you're considering running. 
Well, you know, look, I'm not ruling out anything right now, but the point is I'm going to keep on commenting regardless of whatever I decide to do. All right, fair mm-hmm. enough. Paul Vallis, former superintendent uh, around the country, Bridgeport School District, uh, Recovery School District in Louisiana, Philadelphia, and, of course, CPS. Paul, thanks as always. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Before you see it on TV, share it on Facebook or read about it in the paper. Hear it here first. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560. The Answer. The Lou Dobbs Financial Report is brought to you by Signature Bank, helping local businesses succeed. Visit SignatureBank.Bank for your commercial banking needs. I'm Lou Dobbs. A new college admissions scandal brewing. EU Central Bank says green energy will send household bills soaring. A big year for Rolls-Royce. Those stories next. You know, if you feel like you're stuck with a health care plan that isn't affordable or you simply don't like it, right now is a great time to switch to MediShare. The typical family saves $500 or more per month with MediShare. And what's more, they like it. MediShare has double the customer satisfaction rate when compared to health insurance. Double. You get access to a massive network of providers and 24-7 telehealth. And MediShare is the most trusted name in healthcare sharing. It's been around for more than 25 years.